Oi gente, bem-vindos de volta ao canal. No vídeo de hoje eu trouxe Jace, que não consegue ver porque tá sem óculos. A gente teve que tirar o óculos porque tava refletindo no óculos dele, a luz, enfim. Uh, no vídeo de hoje é tipo uma manual de instruções de como namorar um americano. Uma conhecida minha do Brasil me mandou mensagem que ela estava conhecendo um americano e tal. E ela falou, Júlia, eu procuro tanto, assim, informações sobre... Ah, o que significa isso quando ele faz isso? E tem só informações tão superficiais e é, eu queria que você pudesse falar mais sobre isso, faz um vídeo e tal. Então, tô aqui fazendo esse vídeo, não só vou dar a minha opinião, mas claro, tudo meu marido, que é americano, pra quem, <risos> pra quem não gosta da palavra americano, estadunidense, então ele vai dar opinião real, tipo, bem mais, né, com mais propriedade do que eu. E eu também vou responder perguntas de vocês no final, e é isso. Então, gente, pra começar, vamos falar os tipos de cara nos aplicativos de relacionamento. Se você mora aqui, tá conhecendo, provavelmente vai conhecer por, por aplicativo. Se você tá no Brasil ainda e tá conhecendo aqui, provavelmente vai ser por aplicativo também. Então, você vai precisar desse guia. Então, o Jace concordou que tem quatro tipos de caras. E eu vou falar primeiro... O tipo mais comum, infelizmente, é o cara das nudes. Ele simplesmente vai mandar uma foto, né, da genital dele, <risos> que eu não vou falar aqui pra não nos monetizar, mas ele vai mandar aquela fotinha e pá, não tem um bom dia, não tem um oi, tudo bem, não tem nada. Aquela foto ali, você se assusta, é aquilo ali mesmo. E aí ele vai pedir foto, vai ficar pedindo foto pra você, ah, manda foto de você agora, manda foto de você aqui. Você tem Snapchat? Se pedir Snapchat, tá querendo nude. Enfim, <risos> e aí... Esse é o primeiro tipo de cara, já corre, entendeu? Porque tá fazendo isso com todo mundo também. O segundo tipo de cara é o que copia e cola. Ele vai escrever uma mensagem bonitinha. Oi, nossa, você tem um sorriso lindo, maravilhoso. Nossa, você é um anjo, não sei o que. Vai falar aquelas coisas bem é, clichê. E aí, ele vai estar tá copiando e colando e mandando pra todas as pessoas. Então, assim, não perca seu tempo também, tá? Não perca seu tempo. Tem esse tipo de cara aí. Tudo bom? O terceiro tipo de cara... É o cara que não sabe muito bem o que quer, ele tá lá, perdido na dele, ele some, ele aparece. Talvez ele tenha acabado de sair de um relacionamento, tem muito assim. E tem o cara que é o cara real, é o cara que você quer conhecer. Geralmente eles colocam bastante coisa no perfil, do que eles estão procurando, do que eles gostam de fazer. Geralmente eles vão buscar conversas baseadas em coisas que eles veem no perfil de vocês, que você tem em comum. Então, esse é o cara que você quer conhecer, tá bom? Então, gente, é... existe essa coisa do conceito de dates. Muitas pessoas, muitos americanos aqui, levam isso como tipo uma entrevista, sabe? Ah, eles vão em vários dates com várias pessoas, não porque eles têm algum tipo de interesse romântico com a pessoa, mas porque eles querem conhecer a pessoa e ver se realmente eles querem manter aquela pessoa no livrinho ali delas, entendeu? E depois ir filtrando até chegar a não sei. Uma pessoa que eles gostam. E também tem uh, a pessoa que, que sim, vai pra date com interesse romântico. Mas quem eu falo sobre isso é o Jason, porque ele tem mais experiência. So if you're going on a date with someone, there is definitely that implied romantic interest, but mostly in the sense of like you meet their standards physically. And this is assuming that they're not just using you for a meal, right? Um, but you meet their standards like physically speaking, at least on your profile pictures right they they kind of want to see it in person make sure it's like real right that you're not like your nose isn't actually super big or whatever but it is kind of in some some region it's much more business-like and wanting to get to know you um this is more common in the northeast where they live a faster lifestyle and that it's more common to like to date a lot to go on like one or two dates with people a lot more often to kind of see and then you move on to the next person um And some people are doing that just because they're trying to see, like, are you easy enough to get in bed with? And some people are like, mm, is this someone that I can, like, can I ascertain from one or two dates? Is this someone I want to spend the rest of my life with potentially? If not, or if there's some serious doubts, I move on. Some people are like that. Um, they're like that because either they really, really want to get married soon. That's some people. That was me to an extent. <laughs> And then there are other people that are just trying to get in, get in bed with as many people as fast fast as possible and other people who see it as like a career objective to achieve you have to get married at some point do you think the most of men like american men they go out and intention like 
romantically speaking or like on the first date I want to like I don't know they leave the house thinking already I'm gonna kiss this girl or more like um, I need to get to know her it it will one depend on the person but two it's gonna be dependent on their age and their experience level with dating the more experienced they are they're gonna already be kind of tell what you might be ready for on a first date or second date so they'll be like you know This person seems kind of shy. Maybe I, I doubt I'll be able to do more than a hug at the end of the date, right? Because they don't want to push you, right? Some people will be trying to have sex like the first night, right? I will say this, though. If you if you have sex with someone on the first night, don't expect anything ever again. Um, they will, uh, No American man, virtually none. There are some exceptions. Virtually none will marry someone that they have sex with on the first date. And most of them won't marry someone that they have sex with within the first three dates. They just won't. So if that's what you want, if you want to marry that person, don't do that. Um, and there are some people that, you know, if they won't have sex with me in the first three dates, I'm not going to date them anymore. Well, that doesn't really seem like something you want to date, period. So it depends. Generally, the more experienced they are and the older they are, the more they kind of want to pick up the pace a little bit, but they want to do so responsibly. The more younger they are, it's more volatile because they're inexperienced. Então, essa acho que é a grande diferença, porque assim... Se alguém te chama pra sair no Brasil, você já tá com seu escovar o dente, vai comer aquele, aquela menta, aquela house, porque você sabe que vai beijar na boca, geralmente vai, entendeu? Se não beijar, você vai ficar até fechado, tipo, caraca, não gostou de mim. Então, tipo assim, não é normal que beijar no primeiro encontro. Vai acontecer? Pode acontecer, porque as pessoas são pessoas, entendeu? Independente de cultura, pessoas têm suas preferências. Mas não é normal, assim, a maioria faz, entendeu? De não beijar no primeiro encontro, então não se preocupe tanto. Se preocupe em ir com perguntas para conhecer a pessoa e eles vão adorar saber que você está interessado. Então. Existe essa coisa de que a gente tem muito medo. Ai meu Deus, ele está me conhecendo, tá? ele fala essas coisas para mim, mas como eu sei que ele não está saindo com outras pessoas? Porque é normal que eles irem para encontros com outras pessoas ao mesmo tempo. Depende do que a pessoa está buscando no momento. Se ela está realmente buscando entrar no relacionamento a qualquer custo naquele momento, ela provavelmente vai estar indo em vários encontros com várias pessoas ao mesmo tempo. Então, assim, não significa que não gosta de você, que não se atraiu, não significa isso, entendeu? Eles realmente gostam de selecionar, eles são bem... Entendeu? E não tem problema nenhum, né? Mas, enfim, então eu vou deixar ele falar se é verdade, se é mito ou verdade que eles vão em vários dates com várias pessoas ao mesmo tempo. Yes, it is. So people that are more experienced with dating are more comfortable kind of picking up the pace a little bit. And the best way to pick up the pace is to cast a wider net, right? What they are doing is doing one of three things. Either one, they're trying to meet more people and trying to determine like, can this is this person girlfriend, boyfriend material, right? Particularly girlfriend, because the guys are more likely to do this. And they want to see, and that way, like the second or third date, like, okay, this person, they have some, uh, we fundamentally see some things differently, right? Whatever it may be. We fundamentally view things differently on a few aspects that I think is incompatible. We won't work. There's that person. Um, the second type of person is the person who's just trying to have sex with as many people as possible. There's that guy too. The third one is the one who comes from a fundamentally damaged perspective. And they're afraid of not having someone there. So they're always kind of keeping someone on the back burner, right? And a lot of Americans do that because they've been hurt before. Um, a fair amount of the people that really feel like they need to date and have sex a lot because they have fundamental loneliness issues and anxiety. Uh, a lot of Americans are very lonely people. Uh, it's, just, it's, almost, it's just part of our society now. We don't, those people can be kind of dangerous to you um, obviously number two is they just want you for sex, but number three is two because they might leave you for something better and not like hold out for you. Don't be afraid of number one because number one is just kind of like, they're not being selfish, but they're acting in their self interest in that they're trying to find the best person for them. And they're trying to do it faster because they want to start that life a little sooner. I did this, a lot of people do this that are more experienced with dating. I was never talking to more than three or four girls at a time. Most people that are like that, hey Amanda, are, are kind of like that. And I would never go, like I would tell the person after two or three dates, I just don't see this going anywhere. And, and they'll be, either they'll ghost you or they'll do that. 
Então, uma coisa que todo mundo tem muito medo, todo mundo sabe, sobre, geralmente todo mundo sabe, quando tá conhecendo americano, e pesquisa na internet que vem aquela coisa chamada ghosting. <risos> é o que acontece quando você tá conversando com uma pessoa, super de boa, vocês falam sobre várias coisas, e aí amanhã o cara para de responder você, entendeu? Some. Às vezes você manda uma mensagem, ele não responde. Aí passa uma semana, duas semanas, um mês, ele te manda uma pergunta, tipo assim, Ei, como tá tua mãe? Como se nada tivesse acontecido, ele vem perguntando a tua vida normalmente, tipo, querido, tudo bem com você? Não, não, não. Então, isso é chamado de ghosting, tá? Ele só me aparece do nada, de novo, assim, como se nada tivesse acontecido. É uma coisa bem comum aqui, entendeu? For starters, it's not just men. Um, both men and women ghosts. Men do it more, but that's just because men tend to go on more dates than women, I would say. People do this because they don't want to be mean to you, because they don't want to tell you that they're not interested in you and romantically, because saying that outright to your face is kind of mean, right? Um, but it's also highly offensive to not do that, right? After you've kind of really dated someone and then you don't even respect them enough to tell them. I think Brazilians find this more offensive earlier on than Americans because we tend to make, Brazilians tend to make, how was it I? Brazilians tend to make connections faster um, than Americans do. Americans are more cautious and we're kind of a little bit more fake and standoffish because we're lonely but we're guarded because a lot of Americans have been hurt and it's also just the way our culture tends to work. And re that's regards to why. If someone goes to you, it means they just don't reply. If someone doesn't reply like over the weekend, that's one thing. They may not be ghosting you. They might have just lost their phone or they turned it off or you're just frankly not important enough to, to have them tell you that they're, you know, going on a... De phone detox. A lot of girls do that. Guys, not so much, but some guys do, do the whole phone detox. After longer than like three or four days, mm, leave it alone. Don't try to pull a Ghostbusters and chase them down. They're not gonna, that's just gonna drive them further away. If you exhibit desperation, it doesn't work. That's just gonna be a huge turnoff and you're gonna kill any chance that you even remotely had. So, now we're going to talk about como entender quando você está namorando americano ou não? É verdade que eles não pedem namoro, eles só assumem. Às vezes é verdade, às vezes não é verdade. É... Como entender que vocês são exclusivos é e tal. Às vezes eles são exclusivos com você, mas não estão namorando ainda. Eles estão sendo exclusivos na questão de tipo, não vou mais em date nenhum. Vou só sair com você até decidir se é isso mesmo, entendeu? Americans are kind of anxious and... The more experienced ones who know they can go on a lot of dates and they know they can find, those people are afraid of finding something better, um, but already being attached to someone else. That's what they're afraid of. The people that are less experienced tend to be afraid of commitment because they don't know what's going on. Some more experienced people are also afraid of commitment, but for just the fact that, that for different reasons. In regards to when you're exclusive, this is kind of regionally dependent. Um, in the Northeast and in the West Coast, it tends to be, you kind of have to go on more dates um, to be exclusive. Instead of like just like three or four, you kind of have to go on like a little more than that, maybe five or six. But after like six, it's kind of like, hey, what are we doing? But it's kind of an awkward conversation because people like to be impersonal. So they're not, it, sometimes couples will become kind of locked in, they're dating, they're exclusive without even having mentioned it. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if, if the conversation ever comes up like, hey, will you be my girlfriend? Or hey, you want to go steady? That's kind of an older term. Or, you know, I, 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 want it to be just, I want us to be a thing. If they say like that, however they word it, then that, that means exclusive. Então, gente, outra dúvida que muitas pessoas têm é a seguinte. Ah, eu conheci ele semana passada, conheci ele, não sei, ontem. E hoje ele já me apresentou os amigos dele. Hoje ele já, não sei, me apresentou a prima, me levou no churrasco de alguém. O que significa isso? Ele tá gostando muito de mim, ele quer me namorar. O que significa isso? So, it means one of two things. One, if they've known you for like a couple weeks or more, and you're just not meeting their friends, that, that is much more likely to mean they want your, their friends' approval of you. And if their friends don't approve of you, mm, it's not looking good. Why do we want our friends to meet our potential love interest, right? Uh, possibly for the rest of our life. Because 
they're not experiencing the emotions that we're feeling, the chemicals and all that. And they might be able to see more clearly whether or not this person is good for me, right? We trust our friends. That's why. The other reason is that it might just be an excuse to hang out with you. So like if you're having a party and the next day it's like, hey, I just met you yesterday, but we're having a party. You want to come hang out? That's kind of more of an excuse for them to get you to know you more. They're accomplishing two things at once, kind of, with their friends, but it kind of depends. Most girls that I dated, I actually met while I was with friends. So it doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's long distance. They want their friends' approval and for their friends to see absolutely almost every single time. Either that or just their friend keeps bugging them to see you and they want their friend to see, which their friend is wanting to bug them because one, they're curious, ooh, foreign, Brazilian, but two, their friend wants to see if you're good enough for their friend. Então, gente, o último tópico antes de responder as perguntas é como eles demonstram o afeto em público? Por que ele não me beija? Por que ele não segura minha mão? Por que ele não isso? Por que ele não aquilo? É muito diferente brasileiro? Sim, depende do cara, depende. O Jason, ele é muito carinhoso. Às vezes ele realmente não liga onde ele está, ele vai, entendeu? Mas, é, no geral, às vezes eles, eles não vão, sabe, beijar, beijar igual brasileiro beija do nada, aquela coisa ali na, na fila do cinema, ou te agarrar, não sei o que. Vai ter gente que vai fazer isso? Vai, que eu já vi. Só que todo mundo vai olhar meio estranho, então a sociedade meio assim não engole muito bem. Americans tend to be kind of shy about that. The younger ones are so horny that they'll just do it anyways, um, to an extent. But they want some privacy. But in public, it's dependent, right? Like, I don't care if I kiss my wife in public. It, even when we were dating and when we were in Brazil or when we were in New York, I didn't really care. But that was me. People are different. Um, women, American women, are going to be, generally speaking, the most conservative or not wanting to express this in public. Mostly because they don't want to be judged by other women than men. That's just being frank. Uh, American men, not so much American men. It's kind of like, ah, he accomplished something. He's going on a date. He, the hunt was successful, whatever. Mm. Psychological shit you want to, names you want to put onto it. It's kind of a thing for them or it's a little bit more. But people still get shy about it, right? It, it's also correlated with experience. The more experienced... To them, it's not as big a deal because they probably had a few public kissings. Less experienced people are not, but they might be really eager to get there. Or they might be like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Brazilians, Italians, they tend to have that kind of... The more social countries, they tend to be more forward, right? If an American's going on a date with you, they kind of expect that to an extent, but that doesn't mean they necessarily want the sexual aspect of that. They might want the social aspect, but they might not want the sexual. And maybe that's all they want, it's just the sexual and none of the social. Então, gente, esses foram os tópicos que eu queria falar, que eu acho que é assim, o básico mesmo, mas não tudo tão superficial como vocês encontram aí. E agora a gente vai cair nas perguntas e vai responder o que é verdade, o que não é, e, tipo, perguntas mesmo. Então, vou escolher aqui algumas perguntas que vocês me mandaram no Instagram. Se você não segue no Instagram, segue lá pra você não perder quando eu boto perguntas pra gente responder, tá? The first question is, um, are they cold? Maybe at first, if they're inexperienced, uh, especially, just because they're not sure how to act, so they just won't act at all. Um, it's kind of the way some people are. But no, not necessarily. Tem uma pergunta aqui. É verdade que os homens americanos são muito mais despoitosos que os brasileiros? É, depende de cada pessoa, né? Tem gente ruim, gente boa, como eu já falei para vocês aqui no mesmo vídeo. Mas, é, em geral, eu acho que sim. Um exemplo que eu posso dar pra vocês é a questão de, tipo assim, ah, ganhar cantada na rua. Não existe, entendeu? Aqui, eu tô aqui, eu não sei, um ano e meio. Eu, não, eu posso contar, assim, cinco dedos, as vezes que aconteceu. E eram pessoas, assim, ah, ou era um morador de rua que tava me olhando de jeito estranho, um cara já coroa no mercado, que passou olhando... Não é tipo assim, ah, um cara passa de carro e é, 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 é o pedreiro da obra. Nossa, não existe isso, entendeu? Eu acho que eles têm limite. Até porque existem aqui, tipo, se fizer isso, é crime de assédio. E eles levam a sério mesmo. Então, eles não brincam com essas coisas. Agora, num relacionamento, realmente vai depender da pessoa pra outra. Os limites que você põe, é, a personalidade da pessoa. Então, quando você tá namorando, você tem que... Preste atenção. 
Is it like normal for them to meet you and already said they love you? I think that's funny. Uh, if someone like meets you and automatically says they love you, just um, we said hi. There's four people, right? There's the person who's just looking for sex. There's the person who's actually looking for something real and knows what they want. Three, there's the person who is actually looking for something but doesn't know what they want. It's kind of more inexperienced. And then four, there's the predator. Someone who like meets you right away and says I love you is either one, three, or four. It's not the person who's looking for the serious and knows what they're doing. But it's most likely three. Someone who does desire intimacy and relationship but doesn't have any real practical experience in that whatsoever. If he asks if I told someone about him, does that mean something? We talk every day. Uh, yeah, so if they're asking, like, so have you told anybody about me? They're like, they're, what they're trying to see is if you see them as serious. Americans will date people and online, they'll be texting them or whatever. They'll, like, go on maybe an online date or go see someone on Tinder. And nobody else knows. Like, anybody, they, Americans like to keep their romantic life very separated from their actual life. Like, going to work, going to school, friends, family. But if they ask you, saying, have you told anybody about me? They're trying to see if you see them as more serious. They've made enough of an impact on you that you're actually sharing it with other people. So that is a good sign if they're asking that. Uh, I wanted to know if it's normal for them to take a long time to answer. Yes, usually yes. It depends on one, how busy their lives are, and two, just how fast their life moves. That can be normal, absolutely, depending on the circumstances. How do I know if it's interesting? Okay, so if he's asking like genuine questions, like, you know, how, like, not just like, oh, how was your day, but like, oh, you went out with your mom? What's your mom like? If they're, if, if he's actually asking what's your family like, that's a good sign. If it's online and he's talking about, you know, I'd love to meet you sometime, that's a good sign. Americans, men, hate always being the one asking questions. So if they're always asking questions and you're not asking about them, Like, American men like talking about you and getting to know you, but American men also like to be asked questions too, right? They like to be able to share themselves, and if they're always asking, if you're never asking questions or just asking the question that they just asked you, they are going to become disinterested because they're doing a lot of work and they don't feel like you're connecting with them, just that they're connecting with you. Ask questions that he didn't just ask, like a new question, back. That's a thoughtful one, right? That actually means something. And if he is genuine in responding to it, that's a good sign. Is it true that they don't use their tongue to kiss? Like... <laughs> no, no, no. Americans do, yes. yes. Americans absolutely do use their tongue, but they tend to do that more in private. Are the American like the British men? In many ways, yes. While, Amer while most white Americans are not majority British... I am, but most of them are not. Most of them are Germanic. America is still a very British country, by culturally speaking. I strongly believe this, um, just from observing and knowing culture. America is more British than anything else in all the countries. And the only country that is more similar to the United States than Britain would be Canada. And then after that, probably Australia. Why he doesn't want to come to Brazil, but he wants me to go to Florida to see you, to see to see him. Uh, there's a few different reasons why that could be. One, doesn't want to spend the money. But two, um, you're going to find this. Like, Americans know that we live in a very good country in terms of quality of life and so forth. If you're willing to fly there, that shows that you might be willing to, like, if you're willing to invest that much, you might be, you're probably also willing to move there because the Americans are not going to move. Now, some Americans will, absolutely. Uh, Julie and I have talked about this a little bit, you know, maybe for a handful of years, but not for, for like, I'm just not willing to do that for forever. Some Americans are, but that is the exception, not the norm. That could be a reason why. The other thing is, I think I mentioned this at the first one, but he may, not, may, just, may just not be able to afford it. And three, he might want you to meet his family, right? Family's got to approve. And his family, his family might be old school and think meeting on a video call, that doesn't matter. I gotta meet her in person, right? If you've been dating for a long time and he wants you to go there, um, for a long time, you might be proposing. It just kind of depends. But 
maybe not if it's the first time, probably not if it's the first time he's meeting you, but it just kind of depends. There could be a number of reasons that are semi-legitimate. They don't ask the person to be their girlfriend? Yeah, um, Americans tend to not like this question, right? Because we want to be impersonal and just not deal with it. <laughs> um, and some couples become exclusive without ever bringing it up. Like, it's just an assumed thing. And someone's and like, and usually sooner or later that will be asked by a family member or friends, like, are y'all dating? Or like, we're dating, right? Yeah, we're dating. <laughs> uh, and they'll just assume this thing, right? Because um, Americans are going to watch actions first. We don't need to hear words. Now, some Americans absolutely do. But that's just the majority. Like, we tend to watch the actions first. Most Americans will come out, right, and say it eventually. But it kind of takes some time. She says, we are at a point... Where we say, I love you to each other, but he doesn't ask me to be his girlfriend. If he knows the importance of the explicit verbal question and answer in Brazilian culture and he's still not asking, kind of a red, red flag. But it could just be that he doesn't know, right? Americans just kind of sometimes assume that. Então, gente, quando a gente começou a namorar, eu sabia que ele gostava de mim, eu sabia que eu gostava dele. Só que não aparecia a pergunta, tava tipo, meu Deus, será que a gente namora? Só que não, ele vai assumir que a gente namora, sei lá o quê. E aí eu falei pra ele, olha, falei assim, que eu não quer nada, mas quer tudo. Falei, olha, não sei se você sabe, mas na cultura brasileira, os homens têm que pedir namoro, porque senão a gente não entende que tá namorando. É, não sei como é, como é a nossa cultura, eu mandei assim, sabe? Então fica aí a dica pra vocês, deu certo que ele foi me pedir namoro assim. <risos> Okay, so do American men really take Brazilians seriously or they just see the body? It depends on the American man. Every man is an individual. That's all I can say. Like some men, yes, yeah, some men, no. So she said like, if we don't start a conversation, they don't speak. It seems like they're not interested. So some American men get very tired of always carrying the conversation. And men complain about this a lot. So some men, if they know that you want them more than they want you, they flip the script just because they're so tired of it and they make you carry the conversation. That's kind of a little bit abusive, but it's also just because women have become more shy rather than, le rather than becoming more forward, actually, over the years, that men have been asked to carry the conversation even more, and it's just very mentally taxing and annoying. That could be it, or he's just also just not interested. Gente, então esse foi o vídeo. Nossa, a gente falou muita coisa. Espero ter tirado de dúvida de vocês. Espero que vocês tenham aí percebido os sinais, tenham visto se o cara tá te levando a sério, se não tá. Se... <risos> se vale a pena, sabe, continuar com o cara ou não. Mas enfim. É... Muito obrigada por ter assistido até aqui. Foi um vídeo longo. Mas tenho certeza que ajudou muito a gente. Não. Se você não é inscrito no canal, se inscreve, mulher. Se inscreve. Entendeu? Você não perdeu os vídeos daqui. Thanks Ai. for watching. Watch the next one, subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. Oh, we're trying to crush. She deserves it. <laughs> okay. Tá bom, gente. Bye. Tchau.